Hi there. This is President Hand, and you should be watching this video because you were absent in class the day that we had a lab, and now you got to make up the lab. But I will have to say that I really do not want you to begin the lab until you have watched that 15-minute lecture on survivorship, and then this is going to make a whole lot more sense to you once you watch that. So, if you didn't watch that yet, just stop this video, go watch the lecture, take your notes, and then come back and do the lab after you have watched the video. All right, so the bubble survivorship is all about tracking the survivorship or the lifespan of bubbles. Now, for this particular experiment, you know, we're, we're simulating survivorship, and so each bubble, bubble, that is created represents an organism. So um, you are going to be provided with some absent data. Uh, you can certainly, if you happen to have a container of bubbles or wanna do a quick Google search on how to make your own bubbles, certainly you can do this on your own. But I am providing that data for you because I did not supply um, bubbles to everybody who was at home. So. The way that it worked um, in class was uh, each, each group was given a container of bubbles and I said to them, okay, listen, there's two populations and these are two different species, okay? Population one receives parental care when the offspring are born. Population two does not receive any parental care and when each offspring is born, it goes out into the environment and it either survives or it doesn't. So you can imagine what sort of lifespan each of these scenarios might lend to, okay? So, you know, parental care came in different forms. Um, some students uh, were guiding the bubble and making it survive and not burst and they tried for the longest period of time. Some parents were a little bit vigorous with their wafting, and I think they might have hindered the survival of their bubble, but I think that they learned. So the reason that we did this with 30 bubbles is because, you know, after a while, we learned how to keep them alive. So um, here's what is going on. Uh, you should open up your lab instructions. While you were not present in class to complete the lab, you are still doing... Um, you still need to read through the instructions so that you know exactly what was performed and then that's going to help you to really understand it a little bit deeper than if you were just going to dive into the data and, and go through that mindlessly. So make sure that you open this up, you read the background, and you read through the lab just as if you were completing it and, and actually had the bubbles for yourself. The procedure, the first part I just described to you, what happened was um, when the person who handled the bubbles, well, I, I actually just got one bubble out of that, but sometimes like five or six um, were, you know, resulted from a batch. And what they did was they just tracked one of those bubbles that they randomly selected from that batch. And then somebody else in the group timed how long the bubble survived. In other words, the time that it left the lawn to the time that the bubble blower said, stop, it's dead. <laughs> and, um, and then somebody else kept track of how long those bubbles survived. And they tallied how long the bubbles survived. So you were also given your lab report. So in the lab report, there's a section to insert your graph that you're going to produce, and I'll show you how to do that. There's a section to answer some questions, and I accidentally did not add an answer box for number three. So if you could just make sure that you do answer number three. And then at the end of the document is a data table for tallies. So let's say that we did this and a, a a bubble um, survived and we found out that it survived for four seconds. So what we would do then is we would place a tally under four seconds. And then the next bubble lives for five seconds. The next bubble, three seconds. Then we have another three second one, and another three second one, and another three second one. And then after a while, we would have 30 tallies. 
then that same exact procedure is performed for population two. The difference is population two doesn't receive any parental care. And instead, that population or each of those bubbles isn't wafted to its survival. It is not helped so that it stays in bubble form. And when it pops, it pops. And so that is um, going to impact the, um, the survivorship graph that you'll see at the end. So what I'm giving you is absent data. This is data from one of the lab groups and you can see the differences there in how long each of them survived. They had a maximum lifespan for population one. The oldest bubble survived to 15 seconds. <laughs> and then for population two, the oldest bubbles survived only to 10 seconds. So the next step, after you have your tallies there, you're then going to open up your bubble lab data sheet. Now, I created this data sheet so that calculations are performed for you. So what I would do is I would drag that sheet so that it is comprising half of my screen and only look at population one. And then you want to look at your data table in the other half of your screen. And then start inputting your data. So how many bubbles died or, yeah, we're gonna count our tallies here. So age of death zero, how many tallies do I have? Total number dying at this age, I have zero. That means that none died at that age out of all 30. That means that all 30 survived past zero seconds. So that makes sense. Then how many do I have at, that died at one second? None. So they all survived at least one second. That's what we're looking at in the next row or the next column there, 30 survivors. And actually I'll go ahead and fill in. So the other thing that you need to do on the bottom of your screen or on the bottom of your spreadsheet there, the yellow box is maximum lifespan. That is how old is the oldest bubble in that population? And for us, it's 15. Okay, great. So now this other column is starting to populate as well, and I'll talk about that in a second. So age of death, two seconds. How many bubbles died at two seconds? None. So zero. All 30 of them survived to 30, or excuse me, to two seconds. Then at three seconds, two of them died once they reached that age. So I would put two there. And then I can see that I have more numbers being populated into this section. Now, I don't really like that I have all these decimals, so I'm going to highlight all of these numbers and I am going to make them so that they are whole numbers by changing how many decimal places. So again, I can increase decimal, I can values past the decimal or decrease that number. That seems a lot less hectic. Age of death four. How many bubbles died at age four seconds? One, two, three, four, five, six died there. And then five, I have four died at that age. How many died when they were six seconds old? Four. How many died when they were seven seconds old? Two, you should be doing this along with me. I hope you are. How many died when they, when there were, or when they were eight seconds old? Three, oops. There we go. Three. How many died when they were nine seconds old? Two. How many died when they were 10 seconds old? Three. How many died when they were 11 seconds old? Two. And how many died when they were 12 seconds old? One. How many died when they were 13 seconds old? Mm. 
Oops, I didn't mean to put that there. Zero tallies. How many died at 14 seconds old? Zero. And that last one out of my 30 bubbles, it died when it was 15 seconds old. Okay. So the only data that really is going to matter to me is this data that is goes until 15 as the age of death. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just fill this yellow so I know like that's what I want to be looking at. Now, I'm going to then graph this data. So I just want to make sure that I'm only looking at the numbers that I want to in order to graph. Well, this spreadsheet tells me that I'm going to put max or excuse me, percent of maximum lifespan on the x-axis. What does that even really mean? So remember I put this number 15 there. So the maximum lifespan is 15. And therefore, age of death 15 is 100% of that maximum lifespan. Age of death at 14 is a 93% of that maximum lifespan. So we've converted the actual lifespan to a percentage so that we can graph population one and population two on the same graph, and then they both end at that same point. And you'll see why. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this column, I'm gonna make it bold, and then my y-axis is gonna be my percent surviving, and I'm going to go ahead and make that column bold as well. And I don't need these other columns, so I'm just gonna highlight those columns, and then I'm gonna right click and I do believe that there's an option where I can hide them. I just don't want to see them anymore because I don't need them anymore. So hide columns. And I don't need age of death column either. Hide column. Where is that? I don't know why I don't see this. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. So there's the numbers that I need to graph. Now, you're going to do the same exact thing with the data that's given to you for population two, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what the graph should should look like. So I shared a um, you have a Google drawing that has this particular um, that has this particular background on it uh, graph paper. This is a semi log um, graph paper and and I'll just show you how this works with type one and type two and type three survivorship curves. Yeah, okay. So remember that um, type one survivorship curves, we're looking at survivorship as a percent here. Now this is a semi-log graph. So halfway up the graph paper isn't 50%. Halfway up the graph on your y-axis is actually 10%. And then the rest, the other half, the top half of, half of the graph is the other 90%, okay? Now, this puts the logarithmic data into the graph for you, and it makes the curve more noticeable. Um, it doesn't change the data at all. It just makes it into your the way that we see survivorship curves normally. And so I want you to get acquainted with this by using this graph paper in order to graph your data. So let's say that, um, let's say that it's for humans. So let's say that we're tracking 100 individuals, just for like nice clean numbers. If we're tracking 100 individuals, then we have all 100 of them are born. So you're going to start up there in the top left. And then after that, very few of them are going to die out of that 100 at that young age. So this is percent of maximum lifespan. So 100% of the life expectancy of a human, honestly, it kind of depends, but I think it's around, I think it's around 80 years now, maybe, maybe 78, we'll just say 80 for humans, okay? So that's the age and that equals 100%. That's the maximum lifespan. So let's say that 
we have out of our 100 individuals that are born, okay, all of them survive birth, and then, um, you know, 100 of them reach to 20 years old, and all of them reach to 40 years old, all of them reach to 50 years old. And then let's say that something happens where some start to get sick and they start to, every once in a while, one person dies. Okay, and so let's say that 20 of them survive Okay, survivorship, 20 of them survive to the age, whatever 90% of 80 is, <laughs> or 90% of the life expectancy. So 20 of them survive to there. And then we have 10% um, surviving to 95%. No, let's say it's less than that. Let's say that only... This would be two. So this is one, this is two, three, four, five. So we'll say that just a few survive there. And then we'll say that only one survives to that age and then they die. So their graph would look like this. This is a type one survivorship curve for humans. Okay. So let's look at your graph, um, and I'm making you graph this rather than creating a graph on, on Google Sheets because I really need you to become acquainted with this type of um, this semi-log um, axis that's given to you. Sorry. All right. So let me go ahead and find that graph. Here's the easiest way to do this. What I want to do is under my line tool, this is going to be a curved line to some respect. So go ahead and create not the curved connector, but just the curved line. And you will not be able to edit the color or the thickness or the weight of your line at first. You won't be able to edit that until you actually create the line. And so what I'm going to do is I'll just start this off just to show you how I would do it. I have my x-axis 0% and then my y-axis is 100. So over 0, up 100, they're all going to start like that. And then I'm going to go over to 7%. So 5 would be here. 7%, still 100% survival. And then I've got 13% still 100% survival, okay? And then 20%, I'm gonna go ahead and click where 13 is. Let's do 13, so 13 would be about there. And then I have 20% maximum lifespan to 93% survivorship. So 90 is all the way up here. So it's not really gonna create that much of a curve so far. Okay, and then 27%, 73% survival. So 25, this would be 27 right there. And that's 73%. So 70, there's 75. So I'm not going to graph this whole thing. You're going to have to do this on your own. But when you're finished with your line, okay, just double click. And now my line, I accidentally created another one. When you're double click, you're saying to the computer, I'm great, I'm done with that line. So then what you can do is put your select tool on, click your line, and then just change the thickness. Four is fine and then the color of it, just make it something that stands out. It could even be thicker than that, yeah. Okay, so that'll get you started with your graph. 
Let me know if you have any issues with that. Don't forget that for every graph you always need, especially you're going to have two lines on the same graph, so you definitely need a legend. And then you also need to have a title for your graph. Okay. Now once you're finished with that, then um, please make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm giving you these instructions, but you can go ahead and read through the instructions that are typed out on your lab. And the instructions are there for your semi-log plotting as well. And then don't forget that your lab report is going to consist of your graph that you just need to, excuse me, you just need to insert. Just, so just go to insert and then drawing and then go ahead and find that survivorship graph that you um, that you had created. Okay, and then don't forget to answer the questions using complete sentences. All right, let me know if you have any questions.